All right, what's going on you guys it's royce jacob welcome back to the channel and welcome back to stock talk a series i make whenever i feel it's necessary where we cover some exciting news and price action in regard to some of the stocks we've been talking about on the channel in today's case as i'm sure you may have expected we're covering the good old covid related biotech sector very volatile very wild day within this sector as i'm sure a lot of you already know especially if you're invested a lot of red across the board here splash of green i'm excited to see sorrento popped off today excited to touch on that but we will go down the line here astrazeneca moderna sorrento we will only touch on those three in regard to news but we will Take a look at all the charts at Novio Novavax Biontech. We'll still look at the charts. I'll let you guys know what I'm thinking from a technical perspective. Okay, so I do want to preface this video by saying that days like today, you guys are, are pretty tough. They can be tough, especially coming off a high like we did on Friday. But it's just important to remember that volatility, especially in this sector, it, with stocks that have gone, gone up so much over the past few months and companies that are working on such revolutionary world changing things, especially in biotech, um, it's like volatility is to be expected. Days like today, it's nothing we haven't seen before. So I will show you guys it, on Moderna's chart at least like times where this has happened in the past and, and how that's kind of dictating what I believe will happen next. So we'll, we'll take a look at all the charts again, but you guys know the deal. First, we will go over the news and fundamentals prior to getting into the charts. Before we do that i will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do go on to gain value from it or if you're investing in any of the stocks we're talking about today subscribe to the channel if you are new and check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter first link in the description if you're interested all right so let's get into this article coronavirus vaccine from oxford and astrazeneca shows positive response in early trial cnbc I'm just going to read you guys the key points here, kind of the usual. As always, you guys, I encourage you to go on to do your own research after this, especially if you're if you're trading or investing in these companies. Do more, do more reading. I'm just going to keep it short for the video. OK, so key points, a potential coronavirus vaccine developed by Oxford University in the UK with pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca has produced a promising immune response in a large early stage human trial. The researchers said the vaccine produced antibodies and killer T cells to combat the infection that lasted at least two months. OK, so good. That's good news. That's good news, right? But why is AstraZeneca down 4% today? Again, it's it's just important to keep in mind, you guys, like these all a lot of these stocks, almost all the stocks within the sector, especially the ones that we're talking about today, have are, are up over the past few months. OK, so they're still up, even though it's a pretty significant down day for, for a lot of these guys. Um, they're still net up over the past few months pretty significantly. OK, so uh, we will. That's good news. But why was it down? I think this has something to do with it. So AstraZeneca vaccine data appear less competitive, analysts say. And the reason Moderna was down today is uh, allegedly, at least, obviously there is some competition. There's a lot of news in regard to other companies. So there is the competition side of it. But uh, Moderna's, Moderna's fall is kind of attributed to an analyst downgrade. And when, with, with analysts, whenever analysts give, a, give an upgrade, downgrade, whatever, um, I've never personally put a lot of weight to that. I know a lot of people do. It is their job. They're, they're uh, <laughs> credited individuals at, at saying this, at doing this. They research companies. That is their job. But you guys, it's important to remember that everything is an opinion and these analysts are people too. And this is just their opinion. OK, so obviously it does take a toll. I've never put a lot of weight on it, but it's obvious people do. OK, so I do want to read this. AstraZeneca fell from a record high in New York trading after data from the company's COVID-19 vaccine candidate, though promising, fueled concerns about whether it can match competitors. Bernstein analysts led by Ronnie Gall said the vaccine developed in partnership with the University of Oxford showed early positive data. The benefits didn't appear to match the bar set by programs from Pfizer, BioNTech, as well as Moderna. In the competitive context, they failed to impress. And again, you guys, this this could have something to do like there's always going to be two sides, two sides of the coin, right? Like there's always going to be opinions on both sides. Always the bulls, always the bears. That's the market. So just remember, you guys, this is it's these are opinions, but um, this could have something to do with why AstraZeneca fell today. OK, so we'll take a look at AstraZeneca. Uh, I did. If you guys caught the last one, I did touch on it. I drew this upward trend line that it might that it's probably going to start using. Again, it had this high today, broke above that the other day. It said it was pretty much uh, it was in. I mean, it was free territory. It's, this is all time highs for AstraZeneca. So it could have done anything after that. It did pull below this upper trend line. Uh, so I do believe it'll probably use this line now as a line of resistance. OK, so that is uh, I'm personally not invested in AstraZeneca right now. So um, I want to let you guys know that I, I'm not incentivized in any way to see the stock do anything. So what makes sense to me, though, is that it will continue to use this upper trend line as a line of resistance. But if it does break above this line, this trend line, so I encourage uh, uh, with a lot of these guys, you got um, I encourage you to go into your own charts and draw some trend lines because, again, these are these are all reliable. So if it does break above this trend line and break this line of resistance, then I do think we could see more upward momentum. Remember, you guys, AstraZeneca is a huge company at what, 160 bill, I believe. 
So this new, okay, 160 billion is, is AstraZeneca's market cap. So significantly bigger than a lot of these. Obviously they do other things uh, than they're just trying to develop a COVID vaccine. Obviously that's what they're getting a lot of press for right now. That's what the world wants. But AstraZeneca, a huge pharmaceutical company, um, huge market cap though. So it is a little tougher for it to see crazy swings, uh, both up and down. All right, so Moderna, again, Let's look at the article, see what happened here. So Motley Fool, why Moderna stock plunged today? What happened? Shares of Moderna fell sharply on Monday following an analyst downgrade in positive vaccine trial results from a rival drug maker. By the close of trading, the stock was down 12.8% after falling as much as 17 point cent early in the day. Yeah. So again, you guys, Moderna crushed it on Friday. That's what makes days like today that much tougher. Um, but again, it's to be expected. So what? JP Morgan cut its rating on Moderna stock from overweight to neutral, citing concerns that its valuation has become stretched after its tour to run so far in 2020. Prior to today, Moderna shares were up a staggering 385% year to date and 576% over the past year. Okay, so that's kind of what I was saying before you guys. It's important to remember that all these stocks on the year are still up significantly, even though days like today, it does, uh, it seems very, very drastic. And, and again, 17%, that's almost 20 percent that's that's a significant drop especially for moderna so just remember we are net up but volatility is to be expected all right so this is the uh this is the important part or actually down here is the important part but i'm going to read this the firm's analyst also highlighted the continued uncertainty surrounding moderna's covid 19 vaccine candidate uh and intensifying competition among drug makers the stock move itself isn't entirely surprising given the rapid ex execution on mrna the the tremendous widespread investor interest on this program and the obvious unmet need opportunity for a covid 19 vaccine um, that said at these levels, we're having difficulty justifying more upside given the uncertainty around duration characteristics of the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's that's a big thing, guys. Not only is, is like price appreciating so insanely on these stocks, they're working on a COVID vaccine. This is not an easy task that they're trying to take on. So there's there's so many moving pieces, and that's why it's a uh, that's why it, like it, it makes sense to see volatility. So uh, now what? It should be noted that JP Morgan, this is the important part. This is what I like to see. It should be noted that JP Morgan did raise its 12 month target price for Moderna stock from $60 to $89. The investment bank's new price forecast represents a potential gains for investors of nearly 8% based on Moderna's closing price of $82. JP Morgan also noted that it continues to think highly of Moderna's drug development platform. Kasimov clarified the firm's position. To be clear, this is not a call on any sort of diminished expectations around the company or MRNA 1273. We remain bullish on Moderna's long term outlook, disruptive platform in the vaccine space and otherwise, and chances of being one of the first companies to bring a COVID vaccine to market. Okay, so that's very important. And that's not what you're seeing in all the headlines, right? That is, I mean, so JP Morgan, they're still bullish in the long term. It's just, again, with so many moving pieces and co this, this, the COVID pandemic, everything in the world right now is there's so much uncertainty around everything, to be real. Um, it makes sense that like a $32 billion uh, valuation is honestly a little like it's it, it's hard to justify that but you're betting again on optimism when investors bet in these companies when they invest in these companies you're betting on optimism and who will be the first one to market and that's why jp morgan they still say they're very confident that moderna could very well be the first to market and bring the first to and like first mover advantage in this race is so crucial so again that's a big thing that's why i'm still bullish on moderna like they're still in the lead even after this which i'm sure a lot of people didn't even see this part this angle of the analyst uh, downgrade um i mean I'm, I'm still bullish so let's get into the chart here so moderna okay so i did mention in the last or the, whenever i made the last moderna analysis that it could i didn't think it was going to happen obviously but sometimes you're throwing curveballs in the markets that's the game that's uh that's what makes it a game and not just something where everyone wins in okay so uh curveball thrown it did come back down moderna to bounce off of this middle trend line it went a little below it always remember you guys trend lines are like it's it's just a general area okay they're never exact maybe there are sometimes there are times when they're exact but uh, i never i never try to uh, dictate them that way okay so Today, when we saw, let's let's actually go in a little bit. Let's go to like the five minute and really look at today. So, okay, sorry about this. Okay, so again, we saw a huge gap down today, which uh, which does suck. Again, down like almost eighteen percent at this point, down to seventy seven dollars, seventy eight dollars. So that that sucks. It did it did bounce back immediately after. That's not surprising when you see such a sharp sharp uh, move down, a little bounce back. Uh, but today, the reason I wanted to show you guys is where I bought in. Okay, so over the course of today, I, I remember you guys, I say this like uh, hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours. 
before market close, okay? So it's 7.30 my time, that's why it's kind of hard to always articulate this correctly. But like hour and a half, two hours prior to market close, there's always, there's oh, like it's always like the top or the bottom. Not always, but enough for me to feel confident telling you guys that over and over again. Okay, so around that time, a couple hours before market close, is always a good time to either buy or sell in my opinion. If it's bearish, uh, so in this case it was bearish, I, I bought, I added to my positions down here, although my positions took a took some damage today okay they took a beating so don't don't beat yourself don't beat yourselves up if uh if you saw some red in your portfolio today again that's the game that's the game we're playing you have to expect volatility okay so i did add on to my position over here i want to go back out to show you guys where this has occurred before because that's what i mentioned in the beginning okay damn it i hate okay so we're looking here on the daily let's look at where we've seen things like this before okay so right here is an easy example okay you see a huge move up, a very bullish move up. This is a gap. This is even bigger actually than over here. But fall, <laughs> but then you've, again, sometimes that's that's just the game we're playing. This is a very volatile chart. That's why this isn't surprising me. That's why today's price action doesn't surprise me. So we see a big move up, followed by a move down, followed by a little bounce. Okay, so what could happen here is, is one of two things in my opinion. Because I'll just get straight to the point and then I want to move on here. So what could happen is we see a bounce up. So see a little move up like this. I'm guessing 4 to 5% maybe. What would be a safe bet if you're heavily positioned in Moderna? This is what I might do, is if we see a four to 5% move up tomorrow, I might reduce my, uh, I will likely reduce my position a bit. Um, just because again, it is very, it, it's, it's possible to come back down and re, oh wait, oh shoot, I moved this one. That's why I was like, what the heck? So that goes up, you know, we'll put it right there just so it, it bounces. it uses this as the trend line. So it perfectly bounced off that when we just move the trend line like that. Okay, so, and it, again, it still follows this area. It's right on this area, right on a few areas over here. So it's just an average trend line. All right, so I think that one of two things could happen. Or, yeah, so I think that we could see Madrid to come up here because again, that the analyst downgrade is what caused this pullback in my opinion, okay? And a lot of weak hands who probably bought at the top on Friday, panicked out and sold their positions, which just cut, is a chain reaction, okay? So I think, either people realize and, and get rational and realize that uh, nothing's really changed in Moderna aside from an analyst perspective. And we will still go back, back up here and test this area. That is what I'm thinking will happen. Obviously that's why I added to my position. That's why I just told you guys that. So I think that it's still very likely that we could come up and retest this line of this line of resistance up here at about 110, $115 ish. So Hopefully that happens. Hopefully it does use this trend line as an area to bounce off of and doesn't come back down here. But again, if we do see a 4% bounce tomorrow, I might reduce my position a, a, a little bit more, uh, or I might reduce my position period. Because again, in the past when we see big moves up, uh, followed by move down, you see a little bounce and then it could continue downward. So I'm just, I'm just gonna try to practice responsible risk management in that sense. So if we see a four to 5% move tomorrow, I will likely pull a little bit off my position, but I do still think I'm just, you guys, I'm bullish on the dirt, I'm bullish on the sector. Like I've said, until we establish a vaccine. So I do think we can come back up here and test like the 110, $115 um, share price, which is this line of resistance. Okay, so Sorrento, very exciting day for Sorrento. Here, we'll go to the hourly after this because this looks a little wild, but let's cover this news first. So, Seeking Alpha, Sorrento on go with mid-stage study of abivertinib. That's a tough one. Should have practiced that a little more. Abivertinib in COVID-19. The FDA has signed off on a phase two clinical trial evaluating Sorrento Therapeutics. Ab abivertinib. <laughs> they should have named that better. A small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, kinase inhibitor in hospitalized COVID-19 patients who have moderate to severe pulmonary symptoms on another note, it is, it is inked an argument with Agilent uh, unit ACA therapeutics for exclusive rights to abivertinib on all indications worldwide except China. So I definitely should have practiced that one more. You guys get the point. So good news for Sorrento. I do believe uh, I, I heard from uh, from one of my people, from one of you guys, that they are going to be on CNBC later, potentially. So I'm not positive on that. I didn't find any news on that, but um, I have no reason to disbelieve that. So that's good news as well. Whenever someone's on CNBC, whenever CEO or a uh, or board member of a company is on CNBC, that's usually a good sign. Okay, so let's go to the charts here. This is very important. Okay, so the other the other day I was talking about how Sorrento needs to break above this downtrend that it's set uh, since July 10th. So it's a pretty short term downtrend that it did need to break 
for me to get bullish on it again. And so the, today it straight up gapped right through that. It broke through that downtrend. And what I expect to happen now is for Sorrento to use this line that was a line of support prior to breaking it, that beautiful line of support that we've been following for months now. Um, I expect it to use that once again as a line of support. It did close the day above that line. So it will, I'm just hoping that it stay, it's back up in this channel now. So I, I'm bullish on it. I still think Sorrento, uh, I mean, I said this even when it was down here, when I didn't have much reason technically to be bullish. But now I'm very bullish. Now I do think that it will use this as a line of support again. Maybe I don't I don't think it's gonna fall below this. Considering Sorrento is a significantly smaller company, you see a lot of volume here. So that's a good sign as well. Um, 1.7 billion, it's still significantly smaller than almost all the other players that we're talking about today. So, and again, Sorrento taking the multi-pronged approach. Test kits, treatments, and uh, they are working on a vaccine, not as bullish on their vaccine, but treatments, test kits, that's a good sign in my mind, okay? So I do think from a technical perspective, Sorrento is looking very good right now. I think it will stay in this channel once again, use this line as a line of support. And again, at some point, I do think it's gonna come up and test this uptrend. And I think we, uh, my money's on it, you guys know that. I think over the coming weeks, I don't even wanna put time, time preference on this, but I mean, if, if it does follow this, by the end of July, I think we could see a $10 Sorrento. Okay, so that's Sorrento, very bullish there, excited to follow that one. Let's do Inovio quick. So Inovio, uh, it's a bummer that Inovio did actually fall back down into this downtrend. So it kind of, there's kind of a, a bull trap here. Obviously like news, news really takes a toll on these. You guys remember that like technicals definitely come into play as more traders are in this market now. And that's, that's a fact. But um, again, you see it broke out of here. It was getting a, get, getting a little bullish. But today it did kind of re-enter in this downtrend. So it will have to break back above this in my mind because it's, I mean, it's not really in a downtrend right now. It's kind of in a state of limbo. So it's it's tough to tell with Inovio. Again, I'm still like, Inovio is, is a pretty small company still too, with a $4 billion valuation. Okay, so again, that's still a fraction the size of Moderna. Um, and, and again, you guys, if, if they drop some news tomorrow, they could that could blow up. So very news driven. You guys know that already. Not going to harp on that anymore. But Inovio is in kind of a state of limbo. I don't think it will fall below this uh, this lower line of support. That's unlikely to me. But uh, hopefully, I mean, hopefully, again, I'm investing in Inovio, so I'm, I'm staying optimistic. Hopefully we see it uh, come back and just try to work its way through this. This is a huge channel right here. But hopefully we at some point in the, in the near future um, come and see it retest this upper trend line. So we'll just have to see. All right, Novax. Uh, Novax, I mean, still, Novax is such a bullish looking chart. Even now, it's still back up in this rising channel. So, I mean, worst case scenario is I think we see Novavax maybe pull back to like the 120 region and maybe try to bounce off this lower trend line. And that's the bearish case. Uh, bullish case is we break past 150. And if we break past 150, then, um, I mean, if we hit 150 from where we're at right now in 138, I'll probably reduce my... I don't even know because Novavax is like, this is by far the most bullish chart uh, of all of these, I would say. So Novavax percentage wise is up super, super significantly. So let's actually look at Novavax like one year. Okay. So that's, that's insane. You guys look at that. So back in even May, like early May, Novavax is at $15. It's pretty much seen a 10 X since, since March, April, May uh, ish area. So, I mean, Novavax super bullish. Um, again, if it breaks past, 150 let's let's actually go back in time because that's that's where i found these guys so you see here 150 is is a very conservative area back here that's it just you it just like spent some time around here in july of 2016 um, so if it does break above 150 then i think the next reasonable area would be around like the 170 region you can see it did spend some time around here, just float around here back in uh, 2015, 2016, did set kind of a big head and shoulders pattern right here. So maybe we could see like $170 Novavax. It did set a red candle here too, which is a, uh, which I think is important to look at before it absolutely tanked. So I think after 150, 170 is a reasonable price target. Uh, still holding some Novavax. Like I said, when it hit 144 on Friday, it did reduce my position significantly. So, um, Again, bullish on Novavax, it's hard to tell just because it's so hard to bet against Novavax right now just because it's such a bullish chart. But um, again, I think as far as upside is concerned, there might start to be a little less upside in Novavax, although it is, 
I mean, it's just a solid play. Like, this chart, it's hard to look at and be bearish in any sense. But, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how Novavax plays out. And always remember, you guys, news is so... Um, so so uh, important in this sector okay so biotech and then we'll wrap it up so biotech is i mean still following this upward channel pretty nicely so i think it is very possible for for biotech to come up and biotech uh, i should mention is the only other green that you see on this watch list right here so good for them they had a pretty green day they saw some nice uh, they saw some nice gains today so i mean I still I think bull, it's very it's very possible for biotech to come up here and reach like the, the 106 to 110 dollar region uh, over the coming I mean if it does come to retest this obviously as you expand these out that number just goes up or that number just like the further out it goes you guys you guys get what I'm saying here the further out you expand this line the the more <laughs> the higher the individual share price goes if it does at whichever point it decides to to try to test this area of resistance so I do think that I mean over the over the near future, Bontech could come up and uh, and break hundred dollars and maybe try to retest this, but uh, we'll we'll have to see you there again. You guys, uh, this is wild times in the sector, so it's it, it is hard for me to say anything with any certainty. And I'm sure you guys know that. You guys know I don't like. There it, again, no one knows anything for sure. All you do, all you can do is do your best to um, to stay rational and do your best on on a daily basis okay so i'm still bullish on this sector as a whole you guys know that again until we establish uh, an effective vaccine i am i'm bullish on the sector as the save the world sector so we'll keep you guys posted um and again i hope you uh, please let me know if <laughs> please let me know how you guys fare today because again it is tough on days like these especially coming off such a high like friday to um to stomach this but again you guys on days like this just stay rational keep a keep a sound mind do your best to um Again, when, when others aren't rational, when others are practicing weak hands, you need to practice strong hands and, uh, and not panic and just do your best to, to keep, your, keep focused on the mid to long term. And again, as long as you're fundamentally bullish, uh, do your best not to panic. All right, so we'll close it out there, guys. Uh, again, please let me know if there's anything you think I missed today or, or you want me to talk about next time. Drop a comment below if you just want to talk about anything at all. Always love learning from you guys. If you do want to know exactly how I'm trading trading this sector as well as everything else I'm trading right now, you can check out my complete portfolio daily newsletter. First link in the description exactly as it states. It's a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio. All call options, all put options, all stock positions, as well as cryptocurrencies if you're interested. Um, along with that, I send out a newsletter on during market hours of every trading day talking about the trades i made that day new trades trades i'm closing as well as just my general thoughts on the market it's more real-time updates for me so check that out if you're at all interested if not no worries but uh yeah looking forward to following this sector and uh, there's some exciting stuff happening this week too so i'll keep you guys posted until then always remember you guys take action make waves peace